Now, Kieran Moran is Dublin born and bred. He's a singer songwriter who's gathering a strong following. He's off to New York in March to play Crackfest over there, and then he returns to play the Grand Social here just in time for St. Patrick's Day. We're going to chat about the songs in a moment, but first, this is It's Okay. I'm in the middle of a war between my heart and mind. It's not okay. You have a hand to hold If your days are darker than you'd hold That's a gorgeous song, Kieran. Tell me about it. It's a song I wrote. Um, it's one of the four songs I wrote after coming back from the whole lockdown thing and that. Yeah. And uh, a song about a time in my life. It was one of the four songs that I wrote that was kind of a, a directional, personal song uh, about how I was feeling at a time. Um, I always used to think the the whole kind of mental health uh, thing would have it wasn't kind of coming near me, and I, I was staring clear because I was constantly happy and that. And then just circumstances changed in my personal life, and um, I came out with this song. I was trying to write a, a, an EP or an album, and I was writing songs and songs, and they just weren't doing it. And then this song just kind of came out of me one morning. And I thought that's a it's something to me. I feel like, uh, strange, I feel like when I sing the OK parts, I feel like I'm nearly getting a hug off somebody, you know, each, yeah. time, I'm, each time I'm singing it, you know. And I watched the video for it. It's really raw, really poignant. And you got a lot of reaction, didn't you, from a lot of guys as well, from a lot of men? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, when I released the song, um, it was a week or so before International Men's uh, Day, and I expected to get people messaging me things what like the song is they're enjoying it or they don't enjoy it uh whatever way they felt about it but i was so surprised with the amount of men that had messaged me about how they were feeling in a certain time in their lives and mm. uh just the the type of men and i know not to be stereotypical but people that you'd never assume have a problem they look like on instagram or social media yeah. they're having the time of their lives you know and they were messaging me personal things like the, uh, personal times about when they were feeling lost or feeling a bit empty you know yeah, I was just I, I kind of honoured to, to have people thinking they can trust me with, with their 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 words and and their personal stories. You know, um, I'm just writing the song, so it's a uh, it's a it's a different feeling when somebody is sending you on messages like that, and you're thinking to yourself, it's lovely that people feel like it relates to them in that way that they can share their stories with you. You know. Tell me about yourself, where you're from, your background. I suppose where your songs come from. Yeah, I, I'm from an area um, in North King Street, just off Smithfield there uh, in the inner city. Um, I was raised there and, and brought up there. I was reared there. And um, I grew up in a great community full of people that, that care for each other, um, people that know about each other, everyone knew about each other, and uh, just proper proper, proper people that, that have soul for each other as well, you know, and they're, they're kind of... Um, they have each other's back, so to speak. And it was a place that I always... I found it hard when I first started writing songs at 14 I remember Justin Bieber was out at the time and he had the, the song um, I think he was doing a cover of one of Neo's songs before mm. he, he kind of went major big and uh, I remember looking at it and, and thinking like I can never do this you know and I was writing about one of my neighbours that lived two doors down who gave me a loan of a guitar he had an addiction issue with heroin and uh I just found it mad that I, I couldn't I, I couldn't write about fairy tales or write about fancy things if I didn't if I wasn't around it or if I wasn't brought up around it, you know. So um the songs come from real life stories and um some can be about me, some are about other people, but I never really the only one, as I said, was it's okay. That would be the one that I'd say was the first directional one towards myself. But a lot of the other ones there's different characters that I've met along the way and uh yeah, it's uh, it's quite interesting, you know. Some people do be saying to me, "Is that part about me, or is this part?" <laughs> and the, some of them do, but some of them don't, you know. And how did you get into writing music, writing songs? How did that happen? Uh, my family, I come from a, a musical family, you know. Um, a lot of kind of cover uh, musicians who would play the pub scenes and mm. that, you know. And um, my brother was in a, a great band years ago when he was a kid as well, but. I wanted to um, songwrite when I went to the, this youth centre called Brad Oak, which is an amazing youth centre in the inner city. I got to go back and do a songwriting course now with the, the kids recently. Yeah, I wanted to do songwriting. I remember at the time people had seen me with the guitar, you know, and they'd be kind of giving you a bit of stick, you know, like because they're going to the boxing and they kind of look cool and they, they have the vests on and they, a little bit of muscle and leaning over to the right with my guitar falling over because they'd be saying, oh, he's going off to do this or that. But uh, that's where I first started off. That's where I learned how to write songs with Colm Querney, um, Ray Corcoran. I was then uh, put into a basically a workshop with Christy Moore and Roddy Doyle. And yeah, it was 
them kind of experience starts me off, but I had I was always writing something different again, even amongst my peers, you know, the people that were mm-hmm. in the songwriting club. Um, I remember I was writing the first song I ever wrote was about the, this neighbour that I told you about the the, the guy um, he had an addiction issues, you know. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking like I shouldn't be really writing songs about this. I'm too young to be writing about this. Will I get in trouble or will someone give out to me? But uh, no, I wrote them and I uh, supported Damien Dempsey that that year on on his his tour. He was doing a solo tour on Wheelands and the Axis Centre. And then I stopped for a few years. I, I lost a bit of confidence and now I'm I'm back, so to speak. You know. Why did you lose your confidence? I just, I was, I was very aware, you know, I was aware of people that were as good as me. I was in bands and I was a backing vocalist in bands and um, they weren't too successful or anything like that, but they were, I was always aware that there was people as good as me and I thought if they're not making it, I'll never do it, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I just found my voice. I thought to myself, you know what, I can, I can use me, I can sing in my own voice. I don't have to try and sound like somebody that's spectacular or uh, have something, I think there's something raw there and... I only explained on the way over to this interview, you know, I was saying, like, there's not many out there that can say they're a bit they're a bit crap, but they're a bit good at the same time, if it makes sense. And it kind of gels well. And when I say crap, I mean, there's, there's that rawness and that natural. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no auto-tune or anything like that on the records or anything like that. But there's also the songwriting, which is telling real stories that will relate to people, you know? Yeah, no, you're really talented. What do your family think of this, your parents? As you say, you're in a family that they've done their own, I suppose, gigs. But what do they think you do in Wheelands and stuff? Yeah, do you know what? That's that's a funny one because um, I a lot of my family would have been familiar with my brother's success, my, my family's success many years ago, you know. So if I say to to my ma, I'm playing in Wheelands this weekend, that's as good as saying you're playing in a pub down the road to them because they wouldn't be familiar. Yeah. They never kind of say when you go into the house, kind of blow smoke, so to speak, you know. It would be very... How are you getting on? I'm going out to RTE today and me mad feel like, oh, well done, fair play to you. Like, but that's it and probably wouldn't be spoken of again, no. But um, I like that as well because I, I, I think it kind of keeps you grounded. I don't get ahead of myself and I know who I am. I know where I come from and I think only for my family being that way, it's, it's like that. And they're very supportive. They're very proud and they come to the gigs and my dad's a taxi driver. He's always telling everyone the taxi about me and that, you know, but it would be very, like if I go in and say, um, I, there's a big support coming up, you know, and uh, I have we we can't announce it yet, but there's a big one that that's really special, you know. And I mm-hmm. said to me, my yes, I said I'm about to get a call off the the promoter there, you know, yeah. and she was like, oh, that's brilliant, yeah. Now what do you want for your dinner, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's it's just that kind of buzz, you know. There's no kind of well done or overly doing it, you know. Yeah, but that's great. Tell me about going to New York soon and the invite to Crackfest. How did that come yeah, about? Yeah, that was you know what that's that's a crazy experience. Um, but I got a call and asked if I wanted to come to New York at the start of March. And I was kind of like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, in, in music, you get, there's a lot of people that take it serious, but there's a lot of people that will call you and say, we have this opportunity and you never heard of them again, you know. So I thought uh, this might be one of those, you know. And then he rang me and said to me, uh, it's on the 6th of March, is your passport in day? So I thought, OK, this is getting a little bit more real now, you know. But uh, I'm very excited to bring, these songs are about people on not far off North King Street, some of them in Doors Ed Street, some of them in Smithfield. And to think that I'm going to be singing about them people in another country, over 5,000 kilometres and miles away. Um, it's it's crazy, you know. Now, you're going to sing again for us and you're going to sing a song called Mother. What What's it about? Mother is a song that I wrote. Um, I remember a couple of years back, I read a story about a young girl who was involved in a relationship that, with domestic violence. And um, I wrote this song, for some reason, a vision of a young boy holding a pillow over his head came into me, it's some crazy mm. stuff that's come into me head when I'm writing, but that vision came in and I just wrote this song about it. Um, and then I got to travel around the country and meet some incredible people. And when I say incredible, I don't mean celebrities or anything like that. I went to refuge centres um, around the country and uh, I performed the song, and that, which was quite difficult because it's a song mm-hmm. about uh, domestic violence and you're, you're in the sentence, so to speak. But um, yeah, I wrote that song and that's another one that... Uh, it's personal to some people and uh, relates and touches a lot of some people or a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's it's probably one of my favourite songs to perform both live and uh, in studios or anything like that as well. You know. Yeah, well done, you, Karen. Such an important issue to address. So go back over there. You're going to sing for us now, Mother. I'm going to let my listeners know that you, Kieran Morn, you're playing the Grand Social in Dublin on Saturday, March the 16th, and they can find your course on Instagram at Kieran Morn Music. This is now your song, Mother. Thank you. He would say, go get your father or your brother. By the time they came, he was nowhere to be found. How dare you put 
put your hands on my mother You're a man in no man's life So mother, just stop your crying for one more day I'll say my prayers and it'll go away He was fab, are you happy? Thanks so you were fantastic. You. Yeah, no, you were fab. I appreciate it. So there's a lot of music because obviously your brother was talented too. And yeah, my brother was in a group called uh, No Angels. Yeah, DC, yeah. they were four young buskers, you know, and they yeah. they were around them. I think it was '99 and zero zero. They done single with Christy and Aslan and that, and yeah. uh, they went number four with Help. That yeah. was the single they done. We're only fourteen and harmonising the busking. Yeah, they had a good time, but it's very different. It's, mm. He's giving me advice or saying to me, this is what happens now. It's very different to the way it was then to, yeah, to what right. it is now, you know. They were working off CDs and working mm. off kind of word of mouth. Yeah. Now it's social media, which is great in ways and, and bad in ways, but great in, yeah. in Australia. And, 